Hey everybody, welcome back to Feedback Loop. I'm Jeremy. And I'm Joey. And this week, we're talking about Peach Pit. Their not album, pa- Being So Normal. Not Passion Pit? Not Passion Pit. <laughs> it is the band that I mistook Passion Pit for. Or, yeah, no, that was right. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm getting them mixed up already. Peach Pit, Being So Normal, uh, is, is a band that I found through YouTube Music's Discovery thing. And I was like, you know... I want to do it. And then we did Passion Pit instead, yep. and now we're doing Peach Pit. And didn't I look like a right fool whenever I suggested that Passion Pit album, and you were like, oh. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't on you. I looked like a fool because I thought Passion Pit was Peach Pit, and they're not. They're two different things. They're two different bands. Yeah. Completely, completely unrelated, I think. I mean, there might be some. There's probably some Kevin Bacon going on that you could say that they're related. But I mean, I guess so, but I feel like... That can be said about like literally anybody, so. right? Yeah, <laughs> mostly unrelated. Yeah. Anyways, that's that's what we're doing. So I, I guess we might as well rip the bandaid off, drop the guillotine, you know, get get straight to the the cutting edge of this album. Jeremy, I hope that flawless segue into this <laughs> intro track is uh, indicative of your brushed up segue skills for yeah, this man. week. It's, it's my week. Let's do it. <laughs> track number one: drop the guillotine or guillotine. If you're someone that pronounces it that I've always said, gu- how do you pronounce it before we even talk about the track? How do you say guillotine, Joey? I say it guillotine because that's okay. how it's said. Okay, Pe- cool. I, people who say guillotine, I think, are doing like the quesadilla thing, or like well, I, I have some bad news for you. <laughs> do you do you say it, quesadilla like? But that's actually how you say it, and I mean no, like, no, no, no. I say quesadilla, okay. but people definitely say guillotine. Unironically, well. Uh, we'll just have to find those people. I mean, the singer Neil Neil Smith definitely says guillotine at least once in the song. <laughs> but you know, this is I feel like this is probably not. I don't know. This is gonna go off on a long a, a long <laughs> tangent because there's. Do, a, do you want to save it or are we, are we going there? No, we'll we'll save it. But I am going to say one more thing. It's Versailles, not Versailles. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I but agree. okay, so this track is called Drop the Guillotine, or if you want to pronounce it guillotine, like apparently the singer does. Uh, yeah, it's either one. But, you know, without you even having to ask, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that I think who I am now, I think I like this album more than I liked the Passion Pit album that I suggested. <laughs> that's that's fair. Uh, I, I I wasn't looking necessarily for a comparison to Passion Pit because they are very distinct. Oh, no, but, I mean, just, just like, in general, mu- yeah. broader music-wise, like, I, I should have been listening to this album this whole time. I feel like I'd be a better person. <laughs> well, this album came out in 2017, I think. So. Yeah. I, I don't know when that... that passion pit album happened it was like remember. 2012 dude that was so, that was yeah. ancient times <laughs> anyways drop the guillotine how, how, how do you feel about it joey okay so it starts off with like a cool guitar slide upward and like immediately has very big like indie beachy jam rock vibes to it with just i guess kind of the chord work that's played on the guitars and just that general like they got some reverb on them and the chords, whenever they're strummed, are very like attacky, very plucky. It's got that, I don't know, that kind of. I, I don't know if it actually is like a beach sound, but that's just kind of what yeah. I equate with it. But I, I agree, it's kind of like that that surf rock kind of vibe going. But, but yeah, kind of more bluesy, maybe. Yes, there's. I picked up uh, a like they lean pretty heavily on rock at times, blues definitely, and. A little bit later, there, there's a little bit of twangy, like could almost be country or like bluegrass or something on well, certain songs. To get there, yeah. But uh, yeah, I really like it. It's it's super cool. Like especially, uh, I think it's the second to last chorus where the guitar backs out and it's just the bass and the drums to back up the singer. Yes, yeah. it's, it's a super cool feel. It, it reminds me of a summer day, not necessarily like a super sunny, nice summer day, but just like. The general vibe of yeah, summer. summer vibes. I'm down with it. It's Hell got yeah. those beach vibes, like you, like you were saying. There's a lot of guitar work that happens throughout <laughs> this album, as well. Just like 
they they have a rhythm guitarist uh which i actually think the singer uh neil smith is the rhythm guitarist they, they also have a lead guitarist and he just kind of like doodles around in the back of most of the tracks and it's it's, it's kind of interesting it's a very good sound i like i like all of the the sounds happening but uh, th- that's pretty much their profile, and they don't deviate too much from it. Yeah, for what that's worth. But yeah, yeah I mean, th- it's a good sound. Yeah, they found a sound, they stuck to it. But there, there are a few parts later where I'm just like, it's their sound. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> it sounds like them, which is totally good. I mean, if you found if you found your sound, do it. You don't need to experiment on every song. But uh, so this the the subject of this song kind of spoiled it by reading it but uh it's apparently about the singer's friend who would get like i guess he was better looking and Mm -hmm. would kind of swoop in and take girls that the singer neil is that that's his name yeah neil smith neil smith that he was crushing on this guy would come in and swoop in and uh steal him which upon like first listen i kind of thought it was about like a relationship but i guess I guess it's about not being able to be in a relationship because one of your friends is stealing all the <laughs> Mr. Steal Your Girl over here. Mr. Steal Your Girl. Yeah, I definitely, like, uh, I also saw, because cause Neil Smith actually, like, commented, he, he explained the song as Joey did. Um, but I also kind of initially had this kind of relationship vibe. I honestly thought it was, like, a gay relationship at first because he's a man and he's singing about a guy and there's like themes of like betrayal where it seemed like he was being betrayed. So I kind of like thought maybe it was this like kind of bisexual dude that was in a relationship with Neil and then went off with a girl and left him <laughs> kind of a thing. Uh, unfortunately, that's not true. I think it's a more interesting story, but it's, it's not what the song's about. Fun fact. If you want to hear that story, play it out in music, go listen to Igor by Tyler, the creator. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> We're full circle. <laughs> <laughs> All the way back to our roots. Yeah, and and if you're not into Tyler the Creator and his weird antics, maybe you're into being so normal, which is the name of this album, and the name of track number two, Jeremy. Killing it! D- didn't you forget? It's the name of track number two. It was an intentional segue. We're on oh. track number two, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. This one's got some kind of. It's a bit more plucky, muted, clean guitar that kind of provides structure, and then you get the fuzzy, quiet guitar lickage. Is what I wrote <laughs> throughout the song, which again, then kind of happens throughout the whole album. Uh, there's a lot of soft sounds all around, everywhere on this album and the song. It does have a ver- like an interesting guitar solo section that has some like very distorted and messy guitar, and then it kind of like chills out and has other like more clean guitar and stuff. There's even some synths I think kind of happening in this one, and some other cool layers towards the end of it to just kind of round out the ending of the song. Yeah, they use a lot of cool guitar effects, like to the point where I didn't. I couldn't say with certainty that it was synths at the end because yeah. I just didn't know if it was like I was on the fence. But I took a dive. Cool, uh, what was like the fuzzy tone that they get? Yeah, like the real fuzzy. It's it starts off at the beginning of the song and it sounds kind of like it's in the next room over. Like it's it's. I don't want to say it's quiet because you can still hear it clearly, yeah. but it's, it's like it's dampened. Yeah, and it's super fuzzy. And then later, whenever there's a solo, it kind of gets that same fuzzy tone over it. But then it's like much more present. It's kind of like way louder. And it's cool to just kind of hear what sounds like pretty similar sounds in the effects. Yeah. Kind of done in different ways in the, in the same song. Yeah, they get a lot of mileage out of things that would normally only get a lot of people just like one aspect of a song. They kind of take it and they... They play with it. They experiment. I mean, again, they, they do have a sound, but that doesn't stop them from experimenting with that sound, I guess. And, and like you said, kind of utilizing the things in a different way. It's kind of interesting. Very interesting. And you know what else is interesting? The the lyrics on this song. Because, uh, I don't know. I, I guess I oversold that. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that interesting. <laughs> But, like, it seems to be about the end of a relationship and the eventual, like, growing apart, how people change with time. And it kind of, like, got me thinking about things, like, outside of the song, where it's, like, I don't know, you're with somebody for a long time, or you're just around somebody a lot, and it's, like, 
you don't notice the changes until you're out of it, I guess, is yeah. is kind of what this song made me think about, like how they were probably changing this whole time during the relationship and they still just, they didn't notice it because, I mean, whenever you're around somebody, every single day changes usually happen slowly, gradually over time. So it's kind of like, I don't know, like that stupid thing people say about like putting a frog in water and turning it, like the frog the frog's going to boil, first of all. But uh, I have no idea what idiom you're referring to here, Billy. You boil boil frogs? <laughs> okay, so it's like it's untrue, but people used to say it as like a fact to talk about this exact phenomenon where you don't recognize change whenever you're kind of this close to it. But it was like if you put a frog in cold water and turn the stove on, if you gradually increase the heat little by little, the frog is going to boil lot boil alive before it notices that you upped the heat or something like gotcha. because it gets used to the heat. Sure. But like, that's totally not going to fucking happen. <laughs> There's the frogs going to jump out as soon as it starts feeling pain. <laughs> exactly. Like there is no, you know, would that happen to you? Like why frogs specifically? And well, I mean, I guess the theory is that like, you know, it's the same with like a, a human in a shower, right? You turn the heat up and you get used to it and you turn up a little bit more. Yeah, the gradualness of it is kind of undefined and vague. So, like, obviously the frog would jump out once it hit a certain threshold, but if the, if that threshold is stretched out as long as well, I don't know. I don't know. It's probably, it's, I, I'm not siding with people that say the frog is going to boil alive, <laughs> but there's also, I, I guess, some merit to it in that, like, I don't know if something's spread out over a long enough period of time. Theoretically, maybe. I don't, I don't know what I'm saying, man. All, all I'm saying here is don't boil frogs. And, <laughs> yeah, unless... I, I can take that stance, too. <laughs> <laughs> unless they're already dead, I guess, and you're boiling them to, like, eat frog legs, then that's fine, I guess. Don't boil living frogs. Live frogs, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, back to the song. I, I kind of also agree. I initially thought that it, it was more about, like, reflecting on a past relationship. But now that you mentioned, like, it being, like being in the relationship and not noticing the changes that are happening, I kind of feel like that might actually be the intention of the song because the last chorus, he says, sometimes I can still see you just like I used to, but I grew my hair and you got tattoos and man, it's hard to look through as if there's still like that relationship part there. Yeah. And it's just kind of like, he's, he's hit a point where he has noticed the changes and he's still with the person maybe. And like, kind of like realizing that like, well, she she was in there somewhere, but it's it's changed too much, and I can't I can't get past that kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's people always talk about like I don't know, uh, the work that goes into relationships and everything. Yeah, and I feel like half of it is just being able to like recognize growth and grow in a healthy way with another person, or be able to like recognize that. I don't know if you if if two people are if you're growing apart like that's uh that's not it's not great not you have great. to make a decision <laughs> yeah whether whether or not you're gonna work on it and grow back together or if you're gonna just say okay well this is who we are now and that's that's gonna change so you go your way you know if you, if you're going if you're with somebody who's like you know getting into drugs and stuff you know say hey you can you can go on do your your drug it addled thing you know over over at some techno show somewhere and i'll go my own way and we'll just we'll exist separately from now on the brilliant part about that segue is that not only is it a segue to this next track track number three techno show it could have also been a segue to that uh you can go your own way song by Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> yeah, that was my intention. We're okay. actually talking about that album now. We're talking about is that rumors? Is that on rumors? I, if it I isn't, know. I wouldn't know. R rumors is the only like <laughs> album the only name one I know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, track number three, Techno Show. The tempo on this one like picks up a lot more right off the bat. I feel. I mean, it's called Techno Show, so I mean, I guess you're picking it up to <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like the feel of this song is just so cool because I really get the feeling of a guy who is like sitting in the back of a show, just like slightly bobbing his head who can't really get into it. And he's only there because someone took him there. And 
not to like bleed into the lyrics too much, but no, that's for sure. Like, I, they just perfectly. That's kind of what the song is about. Like somebody who, I don't know if he was with somebody who had like other musical interests, took him to a techno show. He wasn't super into that, but he's kind of just trying to find his place in this new environment. But like the music, I feel like captures that feel. Not only the lyrics, it's just like, I don't yeah, know. It, it definitely has the vibe of like seeing, be, being at like a concert venue of some sort, or maybe, maybe even like on a, on a smaller scale, like at some like dance venue, I suppose. And then there's like a band playing or something or techno music if you're not, but because they don't do techno music, it, it, <laughs> it wasn't a techno themed concert in my mind, but obviously it was for for him but yeah it's just a, it's a good groovy rock jam and it definitely like like i said i, I think he kind of summed it up appropriately and that it kind of resembles the lyrics of get going to some place that's out of your comfort zone and, and just kind of like yeah i'm here not really loving it but giving it a chance i guess and uh it seems i kind of got the vibes through the lyrics as the the night went on maybe he was having a couple more drinks and he was kind of like starting to find things about it and, and start to vibe with it at least on some level even if it's not the same level as their friend well that's good because everybody should like techno because it's uh super awesome it's pretty cool you should pretty like cool. all music except for maybe country and 90s r&b you, you should you should like all music except for bad music yes i so. I, I will agree with that as well but i don't uh shit uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was i was giving you an opportunity and to I segue into the next song i'm it glad you picked there. it up like I mean, this week you you the first three were uh chef's kiss chef's and, kiss yeah you, like like a kiss from a chef that was maybe also a, a, a deity in, <laughs> in some mythology you know so I, I, I got nothing. track four is already all aphrodite <laughs> Couldn't even fucking say it normally. Alrighty, Aphrodite. And it's a pretty good song. It is. I mean, it's what'd you say? This was the first uh first song you heard by them? Yeah, I told so Joey you... last week, I think. I don't remember if it was on the show or after the show. But uh yeah, Alrighty Aphrodite. I think it was a single. I'm assuming it was a single. Uh it was the first song that I heard by them. It was the one that came on my Discovery Mix, and that's when I was like, Yeah, I need to check that out because it's boy, it's got a lovely guitar tone. Yeah. in it and in true peach pit fashion just kind of like noodles about and then sometimes it'll also like come in with some really like strong chords and stuff uh and the song reminds me of a band called milky chance oh my god song. did you write that as well i wrote that <laughs> <laughs> yeah it totally has the same vibe uh which is kind of cool it's, it's got some kind of westerny sounding guitars and some of it in addition to the more chill beachy stuff and i'm not really sure how to describe that but it's 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 fantastic and there's kind of like this undertone growing throughout the song i felt of this kind of like bittersweet kind of resentment happening and like the last chorus comes in and, and musically just i don't know it feels kind of spiteful to for for some reason yeah i definitely got like a similar feel where it started out kind of like i don't know i described the opening guitar like there was the like the cool bass intro and then like mm -hmm. i described the guitar as like almost kind of flamenco-y in a way yeah and uh it just gives it like a kind of mysterious you don't know how to feel vibe right away uh and and then i mentioned uh good old milky chance because <laughs> it just does you know that, that's just milky nuts. chance i didn't even know you knew who milky chance were I, not that they're like a small band by any means but yeah yeah i'm a fan well, cool. Well, I, okay. I, I don't want to say I'm a fan because I, I don't know. I, I've listened to two of their albums, I think. Yeah. So. I, I've only listened to two of their albums and a live. They did like a live thing with Spotify that I listened to. Well, you're cooler than I am because I haven't. Yeah. I haven't done that. I'm yeah, pretty cool. It's pretty <laughs> pretty cool. But pretty I definitely cool. got. I uh, definitely got the bitterness. Like, and I mean, it comes through with the lyrics too. So. Yeah, it's kind, kind of, of a kind of a fuck you song. Yeah, uh, it, it seems to like presumably to a girl that he used to date or something, and it, at least the impression that I got is that she was someone who just kind of wanted a fuck buddy, and he wanted like a legitimate relationship and and wanted to fall in love and stuff, and she was just kind of leading him on with just the possibility of a relationship happening in order just to keep him there because she was getting her kicks from him. 
getting her kicks. What a what a nice turn of phrase there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, it was I got pretty similar vibes from it. Just that I guess with the added thought that it seems to be about kind of how like outward beauty doesn't really reflect what's on the inside. Like somebody can be outwardly beautiful and be a shitty rotten person <laughs> it's true and it's true granted i don't know the song d- doesn't have me convinced necessarily that the the other person is a shitty terrible person yeah but it, it just I, he seemed bitter about what what happened between them and yeah who's to say who was in the right or wrong not me yeah i i i don't know who's in the right or wrong here but it is written from his perspective and he seems to think yeah for sure yeah. That the person, I think he just needs to, you know, he needs to calm down. You know, maybe maybe uh, visit Chagu's side turn. <laughs> <laughs> How the fuck do you segue that? I, don't, I, don't I mean, track, I think he, I think he did it pretty pretty track, well. Track number five is uh, Chagu 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 Chagu. I don't know. Chagu, it's Indonesian Chagu's side so. turn. Yeah, Chagu. This, we're we're gonna go straight to the the lyrics because <laughs> it, it requires a little bit of explanation, I guess, and that is. Uh, I I re- I'm assuming you read this as well. Yes. The singer was on a trip to Indonesia, and during one of his tours, I guess that, that he was going on throughout Indonesia, one of his tour guides named Chagu said that they had like side turn sometime. Which I guess he took him up on that offer later and found out that it just meant doing meth because Chagu likes doing meth or something. So he ended up snorting <laughs> meth off this dude's knuckles in Indonesia, <laughs> which is uh, kind of wild. Hot damn, Chagu. Like, if you're out there. <laughs> he's going wild. Yeah. If he, if he's still out there. I don't know. That's I'm nuts. I'm sure he's got to still be out there. A yeah. man's immortal in my mind. <laughs> Musically, though, really cool track. I really dig this track a lot. It's, yeah. It's kind of like upbeat and rocky but it still has some of the like very chill and bright guitar tones and stuff there's some toms driving through a lot of it that kind of give it more of a driving feel it's got a cool breakdown for the last chorus that leads into the guitar solo at the end which they love doing by the way they love putting guitar solos at the end of the song they just kind of wrap things up which i'm all about hell yeah it's a great way to end a song to end to end really anything because it kind of just rides you out like it puts you in a different headspace like this one it's just I mean, it's super vibey. Like it, the the intro is a cool vibey guitar intro, like almost surfy. But I feel like this song is more spacey than surfy. Yeah, because there's got I don't know, just kind of throughout the whole song, just some spacey like like you said, like I guess that dude's in the background just fucking noodling around doing whatever he does. I wish more bands would do that too, because yeah. there's plenty of times where I'm like, it seems like this dude is just. Not disconnected, <laughs> but yeah, he's just like at the rest of the band is playing this song. He's just like, yeah, what yeah, I'm just, just gonna play. I'm just doing just my own thing. Vibing. And uh, the world needs more of that, I think. But I don't know. I and for real, like I thought this song was called Chagu's Sideburn for <laughs> <laughs> for for like I I had listened to it three times and I was just like. Why is he writing a song about sideburns? But <laughs> nope, it's called Sideburns. Interesting. Side <laughs> yeah, Joey changed his name in our Discord today to Chaku's Sideburns, and I thought it was fantastic. I got a good laugh out of it. Good chuckle. Good hearty chuckle. It's always nice a when good, you're here. A good chortle. Whenever you're out there snorting crystal meth off, <laughs> off of some Indonesian tour guide. Yeah, I know a lot of people go go to Indonesia to snort meth off of some some locals' knuckles, but not me. No, I'm glad to hear that because we need to talk about track number six, not me. Nailed it. That was that was good. That was real good. That was a good one. I had, I had to recover after the last two <laughs> botched segues. Yeah, my bad for one of those. Uh, this one it starts off with like a cool. I I keep saying the word attacky, yeah. and it sounds really weird whenever I say it. Like it's, but it's accurate. It's accurate. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like I'm saying something like a tacky, like a like ta- a tacky vase. A ta- yeah, like something. It's <laughs> it's a tacky something, but it's like yeah. plucky. I guess is what I'm what I should be saying. But it starts off with like a cool plucky guitar part, and uh, I don't know. I really like that it keeps kind of that feel in the verse too. They do like a nice job of mixing cool guitar parts 
and yeah. other instrumentation in with like the washy beachy chords that you hear a lot in like the style of music For and sure. uh, this one they kind of even take it more in a rock oriented way like the bridge to this song it gets it's i feel like the most rock of anything on this album and it rides out the song as well with that with that same feel yeah it's it's kind of a an interesting fun little mysterious guitar melody that kind of goes on but it's yeah it you 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 said it all you said literally everything that i could say about it <laughs> you know what i think the new format of this uh of this podcast should be one of us just talks the entire time and the other one just says yep <laughs> okay well you, you can go talk the entire time no yep. no I, I was I was meaning that you need to be the one talking yep. the entire time. <laughs> Lyrically, not me, not me. No ghost, not me. Is the, name of the track, but also me saying that's not going to be me. Lyrically, though, uh, it's a pretty simple song. A lot of their songs are actually pretty simple, which I'm I'm all about. I don't like to think too much about what I'm hearing. Yeah, yeah. fuck thought. Maybe, maybe that's indicative of me. <laughs> but uh, it's a pretty simple song about like watching a girl that you like get away because you're too afraid to to say anything and then instead you just end up sad and alone and watching her walk away into the sunset yeah and you you literally do not leave the spot that you're watching the sunset in ever because you're just stuck there in that moment it's a rut man well fuck that you know what if you're out there and you're in a rut get out of that rut man i'm not going to give you any more advice because i don't know how to get out of a rut but i'm going to tell you to get out of a <laughs> well, rut. well okay step one take a knife Step two, heat it up, get it nice and warm, you know, because a hot knife cuts through butter, and just just jam it somewhere and pry yourself out of the rut, like you're some sort of hot knifer. Well, you know what else is pretty hot? Track number seven, hot knifer. <laughs> that was a weird segue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna acknowledge that. <laughs> well, you can't, you can't physically pry yourself out of a rut with a hot knife. I mean, well, well okay. You, you kind of can if you do it the way that this guy's talking about. True, which, facts. True uh, facts. I guess uh, pre-script, what's post-script is after. So pre-script yeah. would be before. Uh, hot knife, for those uninitiated, is where somebody who desires smoking some sort of marijuana concentrate heats up two knives, makes them really hot, and then puts said concentrate between the knives and burns it that way and then inhales the smoke. So that is that that is the context for this song. Yeah, it's hot hot knifing, which I learned through the course of doing my notes today. <laughs> <laughs> this is the song that had the almost countryish vibe near it's the interesting end. Interesting you say that. I think this might be my favorite track on the album. Do you like country music, Jeremy? Is that maybe, what you're telling me? Right that's now? what I'm discovering. I like okay, so I like really the rest of this album. Just what and okay, specifically, I like this track and the next track. Just like I don't, I don't know, we'll, we'll get to that after, afterwards. But yeah, Hot Knifer, it, it has a lot more of like a somber, kind of quiet, toned down, isolated vibe to it. The bass does come in and, and plays the melody, but it doesn't pull too much focus from it. The vocals are reverby and, and echoey, and it, it just I don't know, it feels so isolated. And it, 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 it works for me. The drums come in at some point later for like the second verse, third verse. I don't know. And then the, the lead guitar noodling around as expected comes in. And then the guitar soloed around out the end as always. But there's just, I don't know. It's, there's such a like spacious, empty sound to this track that I really, really fuck with. I feel uh, pretty much the same way. I don't know if this is necessarily my favorite, but it is definitely a standout track as i don't know all the other all the other songs seem to have more going on i don't yeah. like they don't have too much going on but this one is just like it's stripped Step back back for sure and you can i like his voice a lot on this track mm -hmm. and i don't know if that's because there's not music drowning it out or if it's like he's just it seems like he's singing in a different way on this yeah. track i guess to fit the music but there's like a cool lonely slide guitar coming in through the middle of the song just kind of that guy he's like it's like he's noodling but he decided to make it more bluesy i guess yeah. and uh i just really like the guitar on this one the countryish vibe that i get it doesn't really come in until like the outro i guess 
the yeah. outro like instrumental part but yeah speaking of which these these last few tracks are like notably longer yeah. than the rest of the album for tracks one through six they're all around like three and a half minutes three minutes 45 seconds this track hot knifer is four 409 ish mm-hmm. and then the next one's almost six minutes and then the final track is six minutes so they just kind of like ramp up here at the end for some long vibey tracks and i think that's also part of why i like kind of the ending to this album starting here is because it, it feels like there's more progression in the music as well as just the album organization aspect of it but yeah it's like the last three tracks i think take almost as much as the first six yeah but Which i'm down i like yeah. i like long tracks yeah, I liked that Fishman's album, and that was just one track. <laughs> it was a long season. <laughs> oh my god, you remember the name of it. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. <laughs> well, yeah, Hot Knifer, lyrics uh, kind of basically, well, the you got the, the reference down for the, the title, but he's it, it seems like if the last track was about watching your, the love of your life get away because you're too afraid to say anything, this one is kind of dealing with that, where he's like bummed out because he realizes that he's fucking lost the one person that he was in love with and so he's trying to trying to mellow himself out and smokes up and it's probably not working probably not because <laughs> okay. those, those things don't tend to work yeah there, there's suspensions of reality but you know what i only hope that uh since then he's he's taken some time to really think about his issues this isn't going to be this is going to be a segue it sounded <laughs> like you were starting a segue but i guess we're just going to go into it track number eight is private presley if he was fighting a war of love and his last name was presley <laughs> there he, you would go. Be, he would be private there you go. Presley. If, if your name was elvis <laughs> yeah oh my god this song's about elvis it is but we'll, we'll get there yeah so yeah. this song i again i mentioned that i like hot knifer and i like this one specifically a lot too because this one it kind of like it feels like an extension of at least musically it feels like an extension of hot knifer where it keeps some of those like mellow vibes and then kind of builds on it a little bit and i feel like musically it's just it's a perfect follow-up track for hot knifer which is again already one of one of my favorite tracks on this album if not my favorite track so it was kind of like a cool extension for me that it kind of blends together a bit um, there is a clear distinction like hot knifer does have a definite ending it's not like the song actually like carries over but it just it feels thematically and musically like it makes sense to me uh there's a lot of snare work in this one that kind of has this marching beat to it but the guitars are still really chill and mellow so it doesn't really it doesn't feel as upbeat as it maybe would otherwise i guess with as much of the like marching snare going on it does get a little bit more intense in like the chorus because it swells up but it still keeps their style of kind of chill rock kind of stuff uh, and then there's this like fake ending in in this track, and then there's like a lovely outro with some strings, and of course a guitar solo that happens. And there's just like there's so much emotion conveyed in the music of the song, and the solo at the end it really leans into like the aggression and the pain, and it's just I don't know, it, it's a trip. I like it musically. It is a trip. It's uh pretty great, and this this whole album, namely this song though, made me want to play guitar more. I know oh, yeah. I probably I think I've said that quite a few times on this podcast, and I have here and there. Usually, it's like two weeks after I'll be like, for that two weeks, I'll be like, okay, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm gonna play. I'm I'm playing every day. But this uh, this album, especially here, because it just it hit me with something that I was trying to perfect. Whenever I still played a lot of like electric guitar, where I don't, it starts off with kind of like a super watery effect heavy guitar Mm -hmm. and then the drums come in over it and then another guitar comes in over it but it's doing this thing and i don't know if this is exactly what the guitar player was doing but it sounds like he's doing that thing where you're trying to emulate like a violin or something where uh you like strum but you have your pinky on the volume knob on the bottom of the guitar, and like as you strum, you slowly yes, make it, it louder. It kind of has like a, a swelling action to it. Yeah, and it sounds kind of like, like the the hit of 
I guess, like a stringed instrument that you play with a bow. But it was just super cool, and it took me back, and it made me want to play guitar. You should do it. You should play guitar, Joey. Anyone listening, if you're thinking about picking up an instrument, whether you own it yet or not, do so. Because music is fucking cool. And if everybody makes music, could you imagine how much good music we'd have? If just, like, everybody put out their musical ideas. I'm sure there's a ton of really good, like, like I don't kind of like the same about like movies and books. If just everyone always followed their creative passions, we would have so much more good, good yeah. art. We'd of be all living kinds. in a utopia. World peace would happen and hunger would end. And, and we'd be immortal. We'd be immortal. <laughs> <laughs> but but as a, play instruments, man. Yeah. Everybody play Play whatever instrument you want to. Write whatever book you want to. Direct a movie. I don't know, man. But yeah, uh, be, this be creative. Create things. Yeah, create things. You know, the subject of this song created things. It's about Elvis. It is. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, whether or not he actually created things is kind of up for debate, and it's a <laughs> it's a contentious <laughs> contentious topic. But uh, he he played things. He he, he was performed. A, he performed. He was a rock star. And uh, he's the king of rock and roll. Uh, he he didn't he wasn't voted that democratically. Somebody just called him the king of, <laughs> king of rock and roll, it's and a like, bunch of people were like, uh, "I don't know about that." <laughs> but, it's fine. But Elvis, you know, he was drafted into the military. I don't know if it was necessarily at the height of his uh, stardom, but but it was yeah. he, he it was, was famous it was during his stardom. Yeah, yeah, he point. was famous and. The song is kind of about that and the impact. Like it's, it's not like talking about how the public re- would react to that, but like somebody close in his life, maybe like a lover, a girlfriend, somebody who was close to him. Being, I don't know, their perspective of him being drafted, I guess, or just an outsider's perspective, maybe. I don't know. It's uh actually about his mom. His mom's perspective. Yeah. Well, it, it's it's just like it's a sad song about his life because he had a very close relationship with his mother. Mm. He had a twin brother. So the first verse talks about him being born, right? And it says, "The cotton bed sheets blood, my son. One less when it's all done." He had a twin brother in the womb, and uh, his brother was stillborn before him, and then he came out and he was fine. And so he 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 has a dead twin brother that never existed. Or not never existed, but but <laughs> it was stillborn, uh, and that I think that probably weighed on him a bit. But he had a really close relationship with his parents, as a result, maybe, uh, and so he was born in Tupelo, I think, Mississippi, uh, which they mention later in the song. But yeah, so the first verse is about his birth, and then the chorus is him talking about like this is my voice is back home while I'm in hell. Who's the old slew foot who took you from me? Because his mom died while he was drafted. Uh, so he, he was able to be with her, I think, when it happened. Because he had some like emergency leave that he could... They allow exceptions for those kind of things. But uh, yeah, so the song's about him being drafted into the military and being overseas while she's at home dying, essentially. And, and he died, and, and it says, Who's the old slew, foot, slew foot who took you from me? Cried, oh, private... Presley she swayed like the trees kind of just like because he had a very close relationship with his mom that was a very big like defining moment I guess in his life and the song was kind of about his experience going through that so it's it's both it kind of does it I guess in phases but the chorus is mostly I think inspired by his mom because like the first verse is him being born the second verse it seems like it's just about stardom but also still just wanting to go home and then the third verse is him being in Memphis. So maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's him dying too, but he says alone, except my songs, you're gone. And I feel like the, the subject of his mourning, at least in the context of the song is definitely his mother being killed. Cause they were super tight. Damn, man. I did that's, some research. Uh, <laughs> that's a lot of research. Yeah. Well, I, I got, I was, I also thought it initially it was like a lover thing. And then I was like, I kept digging at things because things weren't adding up to what I was what I was thinking, and so I ended up doing that. Also, side note, not really related. My mom was a huge Elvis fan. Oh, <laughs> so she she like she collected a lot of like Elvis memorabilia. I didn't know any of that from her, 
yeah because she died when i was young and i didn't give a fuck about elvis at the time but uh yeah so that's kind of a an interesting parallel to elvis's life i guess losing his mom and then i lost my mom who was an elvis fan kind of a weird meta connection but yeah i, I feel like the song's about his mom more than anyone Re- rereading the lyrics with that in mind i don't see how it could have been such a fool it has to have been about his mom you're crazy it has to have been yeah. and you know what the breakdown that you have given us it uh it's the reason i subscribe oh yeah it's, are you subscribed a... to feedback loop of... i am ladies and gentlemen please subscribe to feedback loop if you're listening like and subscribe feel... click the bell yeah make sure you get notifications that's not oh I, I guess it's followed on spotify is what i should say there you go that's i, I follow it on but yeah this is it's it's an intense song i mean there's uh a lot of the other songs on the album are about like i guess unrequited love yeah. or or i guess ways to patch how you feel broken as a result of that unrequited love but then this song it just hits you with somebody being put off to war and their mother dying while they're away in said war and then having to go back to that war afterwards like, yeah it's, it's it's heavy stuff it's pretty shitty but you know it can cheer you up after traumatic depressing experiences going to a party and maybe if you got a friend named tommy you can you can go over to tommy's party and have have some fun <laughs> and maybe while you're at that party you can listen to track number nine tommy's party because it was a single so i mean that that's if it's something's a single that's like a party track right that's sure sure that's people people do I don't know. i've not been to a party that had this track on but i've not know. not been to a party so <laughs> <There's that too. laughs> track number nine rounding out the album the final track it's another like softer kind of curious sounding track like it, it just felt kind of inquisitive to me it seems there's a bit more focus on like the lead vocal melodies or maybe i was just focused more on this one but it, it seemed more prominent to have a lot more like fluctuation I guess in the the range of like the vocal melodies. Uh, there's a solo in the middle of this track as well as the end because of course it's always at the end. But yeah, it's a pretty pretty cool ending. I feel like maybe I would have preferred it ending on seven and eight, but you know, it is what it is. Like end with Private Presley. Yeah. 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 This one it seems like <clears throat> I don't know. I like the the lyrical part of this track pretty well. Mm -hmm. but I feel like if they were going to do a super long one, like, I don't know. This song was a pretty slow build, and I do like how they do verse, then guitar solo, then verse, then guitar solo type thing and build it, but I don't know. I feel like it could have been a vibier, more instrumental song to write it out, or like a continuation of the instrumental at the end of Private Presley. Yeah. It's like something like that, like, that seemed like a big defining moment. And the solo at the end of this song is pretty cool. Like, I really like it. But, I, yeah, I don't know. I feel like if they, it could have been better to make maybe make Private Presley, like, eight and a half minutes long <laughs> and, and the ending, like, instrumental portion be five minutes long and kind of just be, like, the end section of this song tacked on to Private Presley or something. Yeah, it's, it, it's fine. It's a good song. It's a good song. It's Tom, a good, Tommy's it's party. Song. Tommy's party. It's a song about Tommy's party. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it, it. I guess on under the surface level, it. it I kind of got that it was a song just about growing up with your friends and watching them grow as people, and kind of feeling like maybe you're missing that kind of growth. Uh, specifically, I, I guess the surface level of it is is it, he grew up with his friend Tommy, who was his roommate. And Tommy ended up bringing, fi- finding a girlfriend and, and growing with a, a woman in a way that kind of made, uh, I guess, Neil jealous in some way of feeling that he, like, he's, I used to be that friend. Like, you, now, now she gets to know you the way that I knew you. And I feel like I'm losing something because of that. Yeah, I, I got a pretty similar, similar theme where it was about. I guess trying to grow up. It seemed like he was feeling like he wasn't growing up right. with everybody else. 
and just getting older. I mean, we've all been there, man. Yeah, and we're maybe all not. Always getting older. Yeah, I'm. I'm getting older literally every day. Like literally every second, man. Every every second, every millisecond, <laughs> every nanosecond. But I will say, it's it, the feeling he's describing is definitely a, wheel, a weird feeling. Yeah. I have I have been the oldest person in age in a friend group, and the least mature person in that same said friend group. Yeah. And it's it's a weird feeling whenever you realize it. And you're like, what? 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 Yeah, it's kind of like dissociating <laughs> a little bit and being like, wow, like what the fuck is going on? Why am I not like? All of my friends are getting their shit together, and I'm just here playing video games and smoking weed or whatever. And so not that I, that's not my perspective because I don't smoke, but like, I've, I've but, definitely had moments like that. Yeah. It's like, what, what the fuck? Though, if you can get your shit together and still just play video games and smoke weed, fine. Yeah. Go for it. Do that. But, but get your shit together. Yeah. You can't, you can't use the video games and weed as an excuse not to. Exactly. Don't stagnate, elevate. Yeah. <laughs> what he said. <laughs> I, I don't know. That sounded like something you'd, Somebody who like knows their shit would say, "Well, I'm not a guy that knows my shit, but I do know I like this album. Uh, hey, I'm, glad, I'm glad I put this album on the list. Uh, I might check out. They have another album that they actually released last year uh, that I've not looked at yet, but I should, and I'm going to. And I guess I will too, because I also like this album, well, and I'm it. I'm glad you put it on here. And yeah, we're finding new shit. Speaking of new shit, what are we doing next week? Brand new shit. That's what we're doing. Okay, the it's not shit of new. It's not shit, you people out there. So you don't know that. this. This is a first for us. We got a comment on one of our YouTube episodes. It was I. Th- it was the Passion Pit one. I think. Was, I think it was the Passion Pit one. Yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, but uh, a lovely, lovely ensemble band, if you will, <laughs> uh, artist, set group. of artists, group, uh, the <laughs> the Sunset Kings. They, they commented and they were like, hey, we make music and you guys talk about music. So talk about our music. And I was like, sure, man, totally. So <laughs> next, we're doing that. <laughs> we're doing that next week. <laughs> we're doing their album from 2021. It's called Shadow Work in Technicolor. And I mean, I, I've listened to I I screened it a little bit. I was like, right. I, I kind of just played through it a little bit whenever they did it and was like, I want to make sure this doesn't absolutely fucking suck and we won't be able to talk about it. <laughs> and it at least passed that test. So There we go. It's so, at least interesting enough to talk about, according to Joey. Yeah, so, well, and, I mean, don't put all this on me. <laughs> it's that all, of, it is all your pressure. choice. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah, the Sunset Kings, Shadow Work and Technicolor. I'm, I'm excited. I'm down. If, you, if you're in a band and you have music out and you want us to talk about it, let us know when we might do it if it passes Joey's screening process. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. Uh, uh, my my very very arduous screening process, and so yeah, next week we're talking about their album. Uh, we're not we're not going to hold back, you know. You, you know we're uh, we're known for our scathing reviews over here. <laughs> <laughs> By that you mean me? Scathing reviews of Hella. <laughs> Of of just hello, just hello. Wait, what? There, wait, there the, the recent Maui one. Wowie. Maui Wowie, Maui Wowie, just Maui Wowie, <laughs> just it's, Maui, Maui. Maui. <laughs> Anyway, Sunset King, Shadow Work of Technicolor. Uh, let us know what you think of this album uh, by Peach Pit and also the Sunset Kings, and we'll be back next week as long as you stay on our feedback. Bye, also. Bye.